Iran, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we've just done a report on Ukraine uh, escalation, and now we're going to talk about Iran. There's uh, kind of the beginnings of what looks like a color revolution, kind of George Soros kind of color revolution starting in Iran. Stick around, listen. We'll discuss that tonight on the report from Tiger Mountain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about um, Iran and what's been going on there. There's a woman by the name of uh, Masa Amini, who is um, basically, she was a woman who wasn't wearing her, her jab uh, properly, and um, she was apparently arrested by the kind of morality police that they have over there. It's very Handmaid's Tale, ladies and gentlemen, very Handmaid's Tale over there in Iran. Actually, the film Handmaid's Tale and the book and the TV series are based on um, the actual regime that's in Iran. So people always say it's meant to be like America at the moment. No, no, it's meant to be Iran transported to America uh, or to a kind of Western society. So um, yes, she was arrested by the morality police and apparently she died in custody. Uh, and apparently that set off a whole series of protests. Now, obviously, uh, I don't think women should have to wear something like that. So I, I would side with with people who um, who are against uh, that thing. But it, it is a it is the kind of law in a kind of um, uh, fundamentalist uh, Muslim country like that. And um, I do think other cultures have the right to be different to ours if they want. You know, in their own countries, uh, which Iran is a particularly uh, non-Western country. It's known for its hatred of, of Israel, which is also I think why it's under attack, ladies and gentlemen. You know, what I see at the moment. Uh, of this incident is is this is exactly the kind of thing that starts a color revolution you know like the revolution that happened in ukraine like the kind of black lives matter thing that happened with george floyd you set up some incident whether the incident happens naturally you know whether this woman really was um uh, uh, you know, accidentally died, or maybe she was beaten up, you know, when she was arrested, and maybe she died, and then they used that as a pretext to start it, or maybe it was just a woman who was arrested who they've bribed a couple of guards to bump her off, or that, just the same way they could have bribed the, um, you know, one of the um, policemen to lean a little too hard on George Floyd's neck, you know. So these things are easily done, these kind of sparks that can spark a kind of colour revolution. So I think that's what we're seeing at the moment in Iran. Um, and obviously the whole Muslim world and the contemporary right, it, it's somewhat its somewhat problematic to uh, many of us here on, uh, on the alt-right, on, on the new right or whatever, um, because I think, you know, obviously due to mass immigration and there's a whole clash of cultures and, you know, you're seeing countries like France where mass immigration has gone off the charts, England, and whole, whole segment parts of um, Paris, whole parts of London have uh, fallen under the sway of... Um, in these kind of uh, worlds, you know, and I think that really is problematic. But, you know, I mean, the, the Muslim world itself, you know, I mean, in relation to Muslim people in their own country, is that problematic to the right? In a sense, they are very conservative. They're way more conservative than most people on the right. So I don't necessarily see them as our enemy. Um, you know, I, I see the globalists uh, as being a bigger enemy than, than the Muslim world. Uh, and I do think the Muslim world can be quite conservative and actually shares a lot of the same values as, as conservative right wing people. So Maybe there's some kind of friendship that could be developed there. So I always do try and listen to some things that come out of the Arab world and to try and see it from their perspective. Um, I think that the fact that, um, you know, Iran is um, essentially a very, very strong enemy of Israel is really what's going on here. And, um, you know, I imagine uh, Israeli agents will be involved in this uprising. Obviously, they can get them into Iran. So obviously, they want to replace um, the regime of the uh, the current the Khamenei regime, the fundamentalist Muslim regime, with something that would be more um, Israel friendly. So is there what we're seeing? I don't think it will go that far. I think the uh, Iran government is pretty... Um, um, well, hegemonic, I guess. You know, I think you know there'll be some there'll be some uprisings for a couple of weeks, but I don't think you're going to see a kind of Ukrainian kind of um, color revolution like in 2014. But you know, you don't know. And I do think though the long-term goals though of, of Israel and Zionist agents in America uh, is to uh, overthrow the regime, whether through an invasion, through a color revolution, through I don't know. They, they'd even imagine consider dropping nuclear weapons on the place, certainly sabotaging their nuclear program. So I think that's what's going on there, ladies and gentlemen. And I think all. I should be on uh, what Israel is up to in relation to this issue um, and obviously we should see how it plays out but uh, obviously it is very sad what happened to this woman but um, you know I mean you can't really say that there aren't deaths in custody all over the world. Um, you know, it happens in our Western countries, it happens in, in Australia, it happens in England, it happens all over. Uh, sometimes when people are arrested, they might just have a heart attack. So it could have just been something innocuous like that. So, um, you know, uh, obviously, um, 
I would like to see uh, things become a bit more easygoing in a country like Iran, but then I do think a country like Iran has a right to self-determination, you know, uh, and that not every culture has to be a kind of, you know, duplicate of our Western belief systems. You know, I even don't have a problem with a country like China that it has its own way of doing things, as long as it's just for their own country and their own people. Um, obviously, I wish it could be more humane, uh, but like, um, you know, I, I don't think everyone has to be like us, ladies and gentlemen. And I think if you like diversity, um, you know, people live differently around the world. Africans live like Africans. Um, Arabs, you know, live a certain way and Asians live a certain way. And they, they have different cultures that have different values and, you know, they express them politically in different ways. So I think that's what's going on. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to follow what goes on there. But obviously it could be a very big deal if this escalates in Iran. So we just have to watch and see. And that's my thoughts here at the report from Tiger Mountain.